Do not fall for the false gospel of once saved, always saved. Do not fall for this gospel of you can live in sin, but uh, because you're born again, that when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back, you're still going to go because it's a lie for straight out the pits of hell. Uh, I got born again in uh, 2015 and uh, gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, I remember one time when I backslid, I went back to the world. I went back to using drugs, you know, and uh, and I really was born again. And I had the Holy Spirit, but I just fell back into the flesh and started living according to the flesh again and stopped living in the spirit. And uh, I remember I fell asleep, right? I fell asleep in my bedroom uh, in the middle of the day. I think I had been up all night doing drugs, and I fell asleep. And when I fell asleep, I woke up in the outer darkness and I can see like, it's hard to explain because it's pitch black. It's out of darkness, but at the same time, I can see like this orange and I know that the orange was some type of heat and fire, you know? And then all of a sudden out of nowhere, I was slammed against this wall by this unseen force. And when I was slammed up against the wall by this unseen force, these like metal straps came and trapped me. Shoop, 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 shoop. And I was stuck up against this wall like this, and I couldn't move my head, I couldn't move my arms, I couldn't move anything. And these straps had me strapped to this wall, and I knew that I was in hell, and that I wasn't going anywhere uh, for eternity, or until God came back to throw me in the lake of fire. Uh, but then I woke up. God didn't let me, he didn't allow me to stay if I would have been there any longer, I probably would have lost my mind. It was God's mercy that allowed me to wake up, and it was God's mercy that even allowed me to uh, not spend too much time in that place, even though it was in a dream. But I know that that dream was from God, and I know that it was God warning me, telling me, you know, uh, repent. Repent and come back to me. And I was born again and I had the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues and everything of that nature. But let me tell you something. If you look, Hebrews 10, 26 says there no longer remains any sacrifice for the one who knows the truth, but yet continues to willfully sin. But only an expectation of a fiery judgment. Look, don't believe these people that tell you that you can hold on to your sin. Jesus Christ said that the way is narrow. Straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leads to life. What is life? Heaven. Eternal life. And the way is way too narrow uh, for you to get in with your sin. The way is way too narrow for you to get in with your pride. It's way too narrow for you to squeeze through with your anger, with your unforgiveness, with your rebellion, with your backsliding. Now, I want to make one thing clear. If you have backslidden, don't let the devil fool you. Don't let the devil lie to you and tell you that you've gone too far and that Christ won't accept you back. And let me tell you what the devil's real good at. He'll use scripture to whoop you and to tell you that it's too, it's, it's too late for you, that you've gone too far and that you can't come back to Christ and he's rejecting you and that God is taking his Holy Spirit away from you. Don't believe those lies. If you're still breathing, it's time to repent. But it's time to repent right now. And when I say repent, I don't mean a change of mind. That's only the beginning of it. I mean forsake your sin. Forsake your sin and fall down on your knees and start begging the Lord Jesus Christ to give you power to stay away from your sin. Because if you don't, I guarantee you are going to be rejected on the last day. You're going to be rejected. The Lord Jesus Christ said any man that was not willing to forsake all cannot be my disciple and what does it mean to forsake all that's not just about money uh, if you're not willing to forsake your sin to forsake all of who you used to be to forsake all of your uh, 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 evil ways of thinking to forsake the way that you look at people to forsake the wicked church doctrine and these lies that you've been indoctrinated with you got to be willing to forsake all of that come to the word of God Get up in the Gospels, man, and read what the Lord Jesus Christ said. He said, any man who obeys these sayings of mine, any man who puts these sayings of mine into practice, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. But any man who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them, I will liken him to a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And when the rains uh, came and the winds blew 
that I was fell, and great was his fall. Man, hell is real, man. Hell is real. And, and the sad thing about it is most people are going. Jesus Christ said, very few be that find it. You know, but when you talk to people, most people talk about their Christians and they're on their way to heaven. But either they're lying or Jesus Christ is lying. Um, you cannot enter into heaven with willful sin. The Lord Jesus Christ will reject it. The Lord Jesus Christ died. The real true definition of grace is the power to get away from sin. The power to forsake sin. The real, the real true grace, if there's grace in your life, if you have the grace of God on your life, it's going to give you the power, the will, and the strength to forsake your sin. And yes, it's going to be a struggle. Uh, if you look in the, in the Bible, in the New Testament, our relationship with God is always referred to uh, as three different things. A race, a war, and a fight. It's never referred to as a picnic. It's never re even referred to as a walk, if I'm not mistaken, in the New Testament. I mean, when you sign up to live for Jesus Christ, you're signing up for war. You're signing up to go to war with your flesh. You're signing up to go to war with, with, with the devil. You're signing up to go to war with the world. And the Lord Jesus Christ said in the book of Revelations that only those who overcome will be saved, that only those who endure to the end will be saved. Uh, salvation is really a two-part thing, man. Uh, when you confess the Lord Jesus Christ with your mouth and you call upon the name of the Lord with a, with, you know, with a heart full of repentance, that's the beginning. That's the beginning. And he says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yes, absolutely. But that's the beginning. He just put you in the race. But you got to run the race. You got to run the race and you got to complete the race. That's why he said only those who endure to the end will be saved. That's why he said it's only those who overcome will be saved. Because why? Because when you come to Christ and you start obeying him and he gives you the Holy Spirit, you now have the power to overcome. You didn't have the power to overcome sin, the flesh, and the world before he gave you the Holy Spirit. But now that you have the power to overcome, he expects you to do it. He expects you to tap into the power of the Holy Spirit. And to mortify the misdeeds of the flesh by the power of the spirit. And if you do that, you can live. That's in the book of Romans chapter 8. And it says, but if you live according to the flesh, you will die. Understand, you still have a choice. Even after being born again, you have a choice. You know, you you, you can listen to these theologians that, that are, that it's all kind of weird doctrines out nowadays, man. You got some guys that'll tell you, uh, what is it, Calvinism? You know, they say, well, if you don't endure and you don't, Mortify the misdeeds of the flesh. If you don't overcome, that just means you were never saved in the first place. Well, then that makes the Bible a lie. Because the Bible says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's a race. It's a war. It's a fight that you got to finish, man. But the cold thing about it is, we got the Holy Spirit. And God is on your side. And the Lord Jesus Christ is living inside you. And he'll give us the power. He said, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. He said that it's God's will that no one perish, but that everyone come to a knowledge of the truth and be saved. That God is not slack concerning his promises, but he is patient with us, wanting everybody to come to a place of repentance. But the greatest trick the devil is playing now is convincing people that they need not to repent. That, 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 that they can get into heaven, that we can get into heaven holding on to our sin. And that's a lie straight from the pits of hell, man. Please don't believe it, man. Hell is real. Hell is ter terrible. I wouldn't, I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. God only let me see it. I've heard hell testimonies where people are there like days at a time and uh, hours at a time and going back and stuff like that. But what I saw, I wouldn't be, I, and I believe, I believe those hell testimonies. I do. Uh, but the Lord gave me grace to where when I was there, I was only there for a quick minute and he woke me up. And that was enough to scare the hell out of me, literally. Look, man, don't entertain yourself with the very things that nailed Christ to the cross and then call yourself a Christian because it's hypocrisy. And if you look in the book of Revelations, it says that all hypocrites will go into the lake of fire. All hypocrites will burn in hell. And it's hypocrisy. It's taking the Lord's name in vain when we take his name and we continue in sin. Yes, you will struggle. Yes, sometimes 
There might be times when you fall, but if you do fall, get up and repent immediately. Ask for forgiveness. Get on your face. Uh, if you, a lot of times, if a Christian backslides, <clears throat> a lot of times, if a Christian backslides, when he comes back to Christ, yes, and he repents, his sins are forgiven, yes. But a lot of times, you've opened up the door for for demons to attach themselves to you. You know, uh, the, the word of God talks about, uh, uh, you know, the demons leaving and coming back with seven demons that are way worse than him. And I don't believe that a Christian could be possessed by a demon, but definitely oppressed by a demon, especially if you're a Christian that went back to the world after being cleansed. And if you came back like the prodigal child, yes, you've been forgiven, but uh, you might notice that it's harder to, to repent you might notice that it's harder to get rid of a lot of the negative thoughts that you have, uh, depression, uh, demonic thoughts, lust. You know, maybe if you're seeing pornography, man, uh, you, you still have a lot of pornographic perverse dreams. Uh, you still have a lot of drug dreams. Some of it is just the flesh, but some of it is a demonic attachment, you know. Anyway, mercy and grace to y'all, man. Don't believe the hype. Get on your face. Seek the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart because he's not accepting halfway. He's not accepting 99.9% .9 of our life. He wants all of our life, but he will fight with us. He will struggle with us, and he won't give up on us as long as we're not playing church and we're not playing religion. Uh, if you have struggles, keep fighting. Repent, 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 repent because we don't know the day of the hour when he's coming back. And when he comes back, he's only coming for those who have overcome. He's only coming for those who endure to the end. So overcome the world, overcome the flesh, and overcome your sin by the power of the Spirit of God that is dwelling inside of you. Mercy and grace to you from the Lord Jesus Christ. Last Day Watchman Ministries. <laughs>